Yep. OK, let's look at more fun examples. So this is, uh, you know, I mean, if I asked you to draw field lines, everyone would have drawn this. It, there's no great mystery here. I'm just uh, using this to illustrate the convention that we'll be following. Uh, let's make it more interesting. I'm going to have not just the positive charges, but positive and negative charges. So positive charge here and negative charge here. What do you think it'll look like? Sungmin, what do you think it, uh, this, how do you think this picture will change if I put a negative charge here? I haven't dropped it yet, but it, once I drop it, what do you think it'll look like? Okay, so well, well, some of the lines will definitely direct it towards the negative charge. Let me drop it and see if uh, th that's a picture that you recognize as seeing before. Let me drop it here. Do you guys remember anything that looks kind of like this? Uh, these, you know, uh, arrows. Where have you seen something that looks like that? Not wave. Uh, you guys, you guys use the word wave way too often. Magnetic field. Yeah, you've seen it with the bar magnet. If you do any demos with you know iron, uh, uh, iron filings and the bar magnet underneath, then these are sort of the lines that you see. Now these have nothing to do with the magnet. So this particular arrangement is an arrangement called. Uh, let me write it here. This is an arrangement called electric dipole. And you know, if you're a language nerd, then dipole says you know two poles. This is one pole, positive pole. This is the other pole, negative pole, where you're using the word pole instead of charge. Um, so let me just sketch the electric field line here, and we'll go into break after that. Let me use blue. So um, you follow these rules. So I'm going to say each of these charges are going to have four lines associated with it. So one line, one line starting here, one line here, one line here. And I can safely say that near the charges, they are going to look like they're affected only by the charge that they're near to. So you know these lines look like they're going out here. And these lines look like they are going into this negative charge. Now, as you go farther away, um, these, uh, the net electric field will pro be proportionally be more affected by the other charge. So for that, you know, you sort of look at your surroundings. So for this field line, there's no trouble it going straight to the negative charge. So that's it, you're done. For this field line, for some, uh, some reason, this has no problem going straight away from the positive charge. So I'll just draw it that way. I assume it'll be getting weaker because of the contribution from the negative charge. But apparently, that's not changing the direction. Same thing for this line here. The interesting ha thing happens with these lines. So as you go up, it looks like I'm going to have to bend this way to make my way there. So this line will have to bend something like this to connect to this and actually start and end on negative charge. Uh, I guess this did that too, but that wasn't too interesting. This will have to start and end on negative charge. So, yeah, so with this picture, where would you say that the electric field is the strongest? Okay, sorry, um, let, me, <laughs> let me refine my question because you could just say electric field is the strongest near either of the two charges. That would be the correct answer. So let me put a, a moratorium or no-go region around the charges. Um, so outside of these boxes that I have drawn, where do you think the electric field is the strongest? Yeah, in the middle where it's straight. And you can kind of begin to see that around this region is where the density of lines will be greater. Um, to see it better, you have to draw more lines. If you drew eight lines per charge, then this is what it would look like. If you drew eight lines, here's you know, four more lines coming from the positive charge. Four more lines, and uh, so two of those are uh, two of the four here. So let me draw two more here. So if I drew eight lines per charge, then this is sort of what it would look like. Let me cover this briefly, not too long, so that you can see what that looks like. 
So with the positive and negative charge here, that's what it looks like. And uh, in this region is where the lines are the most uh, uh, densely packed. And here's where they are not so densely packed, so the electric field is weaker here. Good. So that's the dipole, and you know, it's an example of using the dipole to sort of how you use electric field lines. This is going to be an important tool as we try to um, as you try to apply them to um, use them to solve um, use them in application of Gauss's law. <laughs> I'm trying to say it in the right way. 